Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for Eden Zero, Chapter 181. Uh, when we last left our heroes, we checked in on Lendard, uh, where Crow had accidentally murdered all the professionals uh, that Ziggy had hired to, like, scan their brains. And we had a bit of tension between Ziggy uh, and Crow, specifically for, for Crow murdering Ziggy's things. Uh, I think might be the exact word he used. Um, so there's, there's a little bit of tension between the two of them. We also find out that the Edens 1 is indisposed right now um, because Ziggy is using it to, to run calculations to find Mother. Uh, meanwhile, we spent some, some more time getting Lobelia um, acclimated to the crew where she sort of learns what kind of ship she's, she's walked in on. Uh, and then it's time for a strategy meeting. Uh, as Hermit posits her theory that chronophages are attracted to things that upset the natural flow of time, including Beta Wise's whole existence and um, Rebecca's leaper powers. And so their plan, as a chronophage, will happen to be flying relatively close to Lendard um, when, they, when they plan to attack Lendard, is to have Rebecca get to the planet's core, activate leaper, and then have the chronophages come to them. Hopefully they all get out of the way in time. Uh, and Ziggy does not escape in time for the for the chronophage to kill Ziggy and not them. Uh, but that's a risky plan, to put it mildly. Uh, and so yeah, that's where we left off. Jumping right on into chapter 181, Prelude to the Kaide War. Uh, which is of course a callback to Prelude to the Aoi War um, at the start of that arc. Um, our picture here is of Laguna in front of a bunch of, like, scent, like, perfumes or colognes. Uh, we see, like, a Hart Cruise bag behind him. Um, it's just sort of, sort of him, like, almost a, a, a model for, like, a perfume company. Um, anyway, we open with Jaume, uh, who is seemingly back in Aoi. Cosmic Era X-492, after the conflict between our heroes and the Empire, known as the Aoi War. Ziggy went on to expand his territory throughout the Kaide cosmos. We have this image of Ziggy and Kaide, um, you know, Ziggy's reach expanding. He deployed massive numbers of robot soldiers, conquering planets with military might. Shiki and his friends began working to rescue those planets that Ziggy had occupied. Three years passed, during which the crew of the Eden Zero matured immensely. Excuse me. Cosmic Era X-495. Having finally located Ziggy's headquarters, Shiki prepares to launch a counterattack. The Eden Zero's plan is to summon a chronophage to Ziggy's base on the planet Lendard. Operation Planet Eater was soon to be underway. Who will win? Shiki or Ziggy? The hour of the decisive battle draws near. And there's something with the way Jaume is drawn in this page, on this panel, the bottom of page three, that's just a little unsettling. In, like, a cool, creepy way, but still a little unsettling. Um, mm. But we see the Eden Zero approaching a planet that I'm assuming is Lendard. Um, as we see Hermit and Sister and Connor in, on, on the bridge. As Hermit announces, we will be entering the Lendard defense zone soon. Uh, and Sister goes on, all hands get into battle position. Um... And we see Lobelia and Couchpo, the two kind of non-combatants on the ship, are listening, listening in on this. Um, just sort of acknowledging the weight of what they're about to go through. Uh, and Connor tells everyone, I may be a man but fled from Lendard, but with this ship on me side, I can fight. Mates, for the future of both humans and machines, we cannot let Ziggy do as he pleases any longer. I have chosen to fight. And we check in on, on our, our original quartet, Shiki, Rebecca, uh, Wise, and Homura. Now that my mind is made up, I'm prepared to stake me life on this ship. Uh, and then we see uh, Pino, Happy, Jean, and Clean. That scurvy scum sent his robot soldiers to dominate peaceful planets and mercilessly kill scores of humans. Somewhat were children. Somewhat were happy families. And that also kind of ties into Connor's backstory of his his wife leaving him with this child. Uh, but we see Laguna, uh, Holy, and Moscow somewhat where young buckos dreaming of the future. And we see Connor one last time as he goes on, 
Now, also, he's like, we see the whole armada, the Midnight Fleet, Elsie's crew, everyone. I say we take it back. Let's bring peace back to the cosmos. And they're all gung-ho for this, for this final battle uh, against Ziggy. Uh, and then we cut to Elsie's fleet, the Skull Fairy. Uh, but first, I'm going to say I'm choosing to be trusting of Connor. I've been very suspicious of Connor given his role in the last two universes. Uh, but for now, I'm choosing to trust him. Um, something about this speech rings genuine to me. Or I'm just choosing to believe that it is genuine and I could be way off base. Either way, uh, with that we cut to Elsie and Goen and Hyoga. I think it's who these are on the, on the, on the sides of the panel. Although we've seen them so, so rarely I could be wrong. Uh, but Elsie turns back to her crew. Pirates fighting to bring peace to the cosmos. What is this world coming to? Uh, we see, I'm glad that like Mashima gave us the reminder of who all these guys are. Because we see Bearman, the guy with like the goggles and sort of like headband. You said it. Uh, then we have Goen. You want to grab all the valuables before we go? <laughs> just, just a reminder, they are thieves. Good for them. Uh, but Hyoga tells him, there's, the, there's nothing on the planet but asteroids. Um, and Elsie tells the crew, I will disembark on Lendard along with the Eden Zero crew. I understand their plan, but I intend to destroy Ziggy first. So she's got her own agenda. It's largely the same agenda as everyone else, but she wants to do things her way. Uh, which honestly is a good reminder that, like, Elsie, for all we love her, you know, she's a fun character, uh, but she is sort of... She is less... You know, she's, she's also her own agent. She's not really on... She's, like, on, she's on the anti-Ziggy side, but she's also on Elsie's side, first and foremost. And Elsie wants to kill Ziggy. Um... Mm. Anyway, we cut to Holy's fleet, the Midnight, which I guess her flagship is also called Midnight. I thought Midnight was like the, the class of ship she used, but I guess not. Um, we see her soldier, Shiro, um, who's a short little woman uh, with like this hat and this like fur, fur collar dress uh, and like just the sleeves with a fur, um, fur edge. Uh, Commander Lady Holy. Are you really giving your orders orders in the Eden Zero? And then we see her other soldier, Ibuki, who's in this kind of... It gives me like an ancient Greece-style dress, I think. Uh, and Ibuki says, If the other members of Horacio and Saison Terra Stellar knew you were joining forces with the Demon King and pirates. Uh, but Holy tells them, still on, on like video chat, Father already knows. Don't worry. Just remember what I want you to do. Show them the power of our fleet. Though, of course, we know Holy has her own agenda. She also wants to, to do something involving stealing Shiki's powers. Uh, but Ibuki comments, that goes without saying. And Shiro, Shiro yells, you can count on us, Lady Holy, sir. Um, and then Holy goes on. And when the time comes, and Shiro grins, Nihihi, we know. And Ibuki drops that same phrase... Um, that Holy dropped to dropped a feather way back right before the planet Dahlia. Uh, the Immaculate Military Operation, yes? And then with that, uh, we leave that there to wonder what exactly Holy's true endgame is here um, to check in on the fighters. Uh, with Rebecca and Happy sitting in one of the, one of the, the you know, little, little fighter, starfighter things. Um... And Happy asked her, Rebecca, are you okay? And Rebecca looks down. She does not look okay. She looks dead inside. Maybe just like the, the, the danger of the chronophage weighing down on her. Or maybe some more, some more guilt over what happened to Norma, maybe. Uh, but, but Rebecca tells him, yeah, I guess I'm still a little shaken. And I was right. This idea that the chronophage attacking Norma might be my fault. Uh, but Happy tells him, tells her, remember what Y said? If that chronophage hadn't come along, we never would have met this version of him. I know, but there were a lot of people on Norma other than Y's, and I erased 50 years of their lives. Um, but, but Happy protests, no, you didn't. They just started a new 50 years, like Y's did. 
Though also, there were like if there if there was anyone younger than fifty on Norma, they just died. Like never existed. Maybe if their parents were on Norma, they will be born again one day. Uh, but still, you know, a chronophage is, is a is an incredible tragedy. Um, but also, stuff, like I, I've said before, I think the chronophage is one of the most fascinating creatures Mashima I think has ever created. It's so it's such a cool concept. Uh, but anyway. Rebecca sort of accepts Happy's explanation and says, You're right. This is no time to be angsting. I go to Lendard, infiltrate its core, and send out an ether signal. Summon the chronophage and get it to eat the planet. And then Shiki comes on in video chat. If anyone can do it, we can. Shiki? And Shiki? This is just, this is a real romantic panel right here. I'll be with you the whole time. I promise I'll keep you safe, Rebecca. No matter what. Yeah, the Sheikah shippers are eating good tonight. I, I'm not really, like, there isn't really any Mashima series. Or any, there's no, like, none of the main ships in any Mashima series am I, like, all in for. You know, it's never really a Nalu person. Uh, Haru Ellie is kind of fine. Sheikah's fine. Um, but this is, this is the good kind of shit right here, I will say. Um, but anyway, Rebecca just tells him, thanks, Shiki. Uh, Shiki cuts off. Um, as, as I guess it's time for the battle to start. It's no longer the prelude to the Kaide War. We are in the Kaide War. Now entering the Lendar defense zone, approaching Ziggy's defense drones. Uh, and Pino, who we see is uh, is on Shiki's ship. Master, here they come. Yeah. And he touches these two photographs he keeps inside his ship, one of which and one of Valkyrie, which is sweet. Uh, even though Shiki doesn't really have the connection to Valkyrie that he does with Witch. It's still just a sweet moment, remembering everyone the crew is lost. Uh, and as he activates the ship, lend me strength. Witch. Valkyrie. Here it goes. Uh, and Hermit calls out from the, from the bridge, Roger! And the fighters all launch. Eden Zero, Leo Starfighters, Launch! Is Leo there a fairy tale reference, a zodiac reference? I'm not sure. Might be looking too deep into it. Uh, but we see six Leo starfighters. I'm guessing Shiki, uh, Shiki, Rebecca, obviously, Wise and Homura, obviously, and then because there's still both Rutherfords and and Laguna, so I'm not sure who is not counted in this in this sextet right here, unless there's a seventh ship we just can't see there. Uh, anyway, launch, take down Ziggy's nest class defense drones. And we see these sort of, you know, like a wall of, of drones. Uh, and then Elsie calls to her crew, follow Shiki. And we see the Skull Fairy makes its move with its own little, like, its own little fleet behind it. Uh, and the battle begins. Here we are, you know, the drones are getting blown up. Uh, it lacks the sort of, of you know, acknowledgement of the futility of war that the Aoi War had, just for, like, how many... Like, like the drones don't feel as as sentient as your regular, even Imperial soldiers. Um, but anyway, she uses, you know, blowing up drones, flying through, the, through the, the destruction, and Pino calls, Master, drones at 3 o'clock. Got it. And he blows up some more, and then he, he activates the ether, an ether link in his ship. Ether link, on. Magimek attack. Um, and he fires a gravity cannon that just, I guess, compresses all of the drones into each other, blowing them all up. Um, but but uh, Wise calls back, Shiki, tone it down. Uh, and then we see, I'll get in a bit, actually. Uh, it's Jean first. There are a lot of drones out there. Let's turn on our ether links, too, and wipe them all out. Um... So they're all kind of ignoring Wise's tone it down a little bit. Uh, but we see how clean Etherlink, I'm on it. And Laguna's Roger that. Which is interesting. Because assuming there are only six drones, assuming that like there was not a seventh drone that just like didn't see exit, that means that Homura is the only one I'm accounted for. So where is Homura right now? I don't know. Um, but we see. Oh, what's happening? A bunch of more explosions. Shocking Shiki. Is that? Uh, and, and Connor is just impossible. And Wise, you're kidding. 
And Rebecca's just stunned. What are they doing here? Dragons? Oh, okay. A fleet of dragons. That's not... Oh, okay. I don't know. Well, how... Oh, I don't know. I got nothing. I got nothing here. Uh, and, and Sister calls out, This isn't just a couple either. And Hermit reads, They're swarming around Lendar to protect it. And yeah, we see... I do love this two-page spread. It's just really cool looking. Um, the whole... You know, hundreds of dragons. All around Lendard. Um... That bad. And is this the first time you really got it? Like, so I'm, I'm noticing here, uh, as you zoom in on on some of these dragons, they have like, like there's this one dragon that's sort of central on like the left page that has a whole city in its head. Is that normal for dragons? I always found dragons to be kind of weird. Because dragons simultaneously seem like spaceships and also like full-on sentient robots. And they have cities on top of them. I don't know. Dragons have always just been kind of weird in this universe. Um, but yeah, dragons. Dragons everywhere. Uh, and Holy is just stunned. No, it can't be. Was Crow not the only Galactica to join Ziggy? Oh boy. Uh, and Elsie just growls. This is not good. God Acnoella. She's with Ziggy too. And we see God Acnoella for the first time in the flesh. Arasion says Galactica, mother of dragons, God Acnoella. Ah, uh, so yeah. In terms of the Galactica, I think this might be everyone except for who are, who are, who are we missing? Um, oh, we're missing St. Fire Knox. With the exception of Knox. Um, everyone's here. The whole, whole damn Galactica are involved in this battle. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's certainly something. I don't know how that's gonna, I don't know what we're gonna do with that. <laughs> Cause, uh, uh, oh boy, those fucking dragons, man. Those are some real fucking dragons. That's a lot of them. That is just a lot of dragons. Um, mm. I don't fucking know. I got no idea how we're getting through this one. Uh, but let's talk about the rest of the chapter. Because um, I will say, uh, it's, you know, I'm always a sucker for, like, the moment before the battle, the kind of calm before the storm sort of thing. Um, and while this prelude lacks anything as strong as as Couchpo and Rebecca's scene in Prelude to the Owie War, I think that was the chapter that, that conversation was in. Um, the whole, I can't, what kind of friend would I be if I left you thing. The, like, rocking a couch pow up to, like, my favorite crew member. Um, it still is a lot of fun. Uh, as you really sort of, as you spend a lot of time on this sort of very uneasy alliance's respective motivations, we have Connor giving, like, the sort of outward motivation. We're going to, to take peace back. Uh, we're not going to surrender to Ziggy anymore. We're going to, to fight for humans and machines for the, the possibility of peace. Um, but then we very importantly immediately get two scenes with Elsie and Holy revealing the sort of, of inner tensions um, within this alliance. Elsie less so. She just sort of wants to kill Ziggy and not leave it up to a chronophage, uh, which is fair. Like, if the crew can escape a chronophage, why can't Ziggy? Uh, and then we have Holy who, you know, is up to no good, as we all know at this point. She's up to something, something about stealing Shiki's powers, and somehow that's tied into the Immaculate Military Operation. There's a whole lot with Holy that's going to probably be a big thing um, near the end of the war. Um, and then we have a cute little Shiki-Rebecca moment before they go into battle, uh, as Rebecca worries about, excuse me, both... What she may or may not have caused to happen to Norma. And also, if she can even, you know, make this plan work. Um, and Shiki's there to, like, tell her it'll all be okay. And with that, the battle begins. Uh, and at first, we have some, some pretty, like, simple 
you know, fights against some drones. They blow up a bunch of drones with their with Shiki's cool attack. But before they can celebrate too much or get really close to the planet at all, the dragons come in. Uh, and with that, I have no idea how anybody is getting through this. Uh, but I guess it's time for, like, like, we haven't really dealt with dragons either. We, did, we dealt with them a little bit back at Dragonfall. But beyond that, not really. You know, just very, very slightly talking about dragons. Um, but yeah, Agnoella is here, seemingly on Ziggy's side, given that her, her dragons are protecting Lendard. And I don't know. I don't know what happens next. But the Kaede War just got even bigger, even more more shit to, to, to happen in this war. And, you know, given given how the Aoi War is maybe one of the best arcs Mashima has ever written in all of his series, I'm excited to see how or if the Kaede War can top that. So with that, I'm going to leave this video off here. Hope you'll enjoy the chapter and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe or, you know, do whatever makes it happy, you know? And as always, your life is your own, okay? Bye.